The Tableland Studio is designed to let you interact with the Tableland network from the comfort of a web application or CLI to create teams, projects, and tables. There are a number of features that it offers, and we'll walk through them here today. We'll start by logging into the actual web app, creating an account, creating various teams, setting up blueprints, and then actually deploying those tables to live networks, as well as interacting with them via the comfort of the command line, such as writing data to it via CSV files or importing existing tables. So we'll start by going to studio.tableland.xyz, and then we will connect our wallet. And this will prompt us to basically connect the wallet and then sign in to create an account for the first time. So you can see that address that we've signed in with. We'll walk through a, a sign-in request, which basically just signs a message. It doesn't actually involve transactions. And then we'll set up a username optionally with an email address as well. So once you go through that step, you'll be brought to the landing page for your team. And as you can see, we're just operating under a personal team, but we can also create other teams that let you collaborate with other users on projects and tables. So we'll start by creating a new project and we'll just call this project, my project, add a description that provides some context as to what the project is, and then we will create the project. So this project is a container for one or multiple tables to exist in. And then the first thing we want to do is set up a, a blueprint, which is basically a staged table that will later be deployed to a live network. So we'll click new table. And then this is where we'll name the table. Let's just call this one my table. Add a description for what this table is. And then add various columns and constraints. So just to make it easy, we'll add an ID column, call it the primary key, and a val column with the text type attached to it. So ID integer, primary key, val, text. And now you can see this table exists as a blueprint. It's ready to be deployed, but it has not been deployed yet to a live network. If we click into that table, you can see all that metadata we just set up, the description, the columns, and you'll notice deployments doesn't have anything listed there because we have not deployed this table yet. It's just staged for deployment. So if we click over to the deployments tab, this will give us the opportunity to push this table to a live network. So in my environment here, I'm just using a, a local host setup. It's a development environment, but on the actual studio, you'll see these chains shown here. So you have main nets, you have test nets, so you can select whatever chain you want. In my unique setup, I, I have this local hard hat node running with local table land, but the flow is the same. So you click deploy, you click confirm, and note that this requires actual gas and fees involved because this is going to a live chain, a live network. And once things are confirmed, you'll have all that information about the table deployment, which chain it's on with the full unique table UUID, that uh, my table chain ID table number. So that, those are always gonna be unique values to your table, but you'll notice here there's no table data because this is obviously just a fresh deployed table. So what we're gonna do is open up our CLI, make sure that the table and studio CLI is installed. So at table and slash studio dash CLI. And I already have mine installed, so I don't have to go through this step, but once you do, you can see all the available commands if you type in studio help. So the first one that will be shown is the studio login command. You can also log out, you can inspect your teams, you can initialize a setup, which is a sort of a different option in the, the setup steps before login. You can view and create deployments. You can import data into a table. You can actually open a shell to query data, read it or insert into it. If you have an existing table that's created with the SDK, let's say, or a smart contract, you might want to import that table into your setup. So it gives flexibility if you're working outside of the studio. And then lastly, using and unusing contexts are helpful when you're actually interacting with these projects and teams. So then you can just sort of set something up and forget it basically. So if you want, you can start with this studio init command to set up some variables like what is your private key, 
uh, what is your provider URL, but we're just going to go ahead and feed these values into the login command directly as flags. So you can see we have specified a chain, a provider URL, and a private key. And note I have the API URL set here. That's not something you need to do. This is just specific to a development only environment for the Studio web app. So once you do that, you'll see that you've been logged in. And when this happens, a session is basically set up. So you can view that from uh, the command line. I'll show you that in a, in a bit. But maybe the first thing we want to do is just list out the teams that we have or list out the projects that we've created. So you can see here, we, we can use the studio project or team ls command to list that data. In this example, you can see that table that we created. It was my table, it was for my project. And this project has a unique identifier under that ID field. So do the teams, you can see that the top level there. So that team has an ID, the project has an ID, and these are especially useful when using the use or unuse command because you can set a context for this. So maybe it's you want a studio use team or studio use an API context. What we're going to do is studio use project and type in that ID. So from now on, instead of having to pass a flag for a project ID as an example, it'll just use that context at all times unless you override it with directly setting a flag. So now what we're going to do is take an example file that is just a CSV file, has data that matches to that table, that my table that we created, and we can import that data into the table. So just to recall, our table is called my table. It has some additional characters at the end, but we do not need that because that's like the unique identifier of the full table, but in our setup, Basically, our project has knowledge of what this table is. So you can just basically pass in the, the pretty name, my table, and then a path to the file. So data.csv is just a, a simple two column file with a value for ID and a, a value for that val column. And since we're writing data, we also want to make sure that we pass in information around what is the chain, what is the provider URL, and what is the private key. It'll give you some information about, okay, who's writing this, how much data is being inserted in terms of just like raw bytes, and then how many statements are happening. So we'll automatically split up multiple statements if it's a, a large file. So if we refresh the page here, boom, now you can see all that data has been written to the table. And again, if you're using other clients outside the studio, like the SDK, et cetera, and read data from the table, it'll work. Uh, just the same as you see here. Once that data is in table end, it can be used across any of the, the various clients that are reading from it. So as an example, we can open up the query shell and we can do the same thing that we did in that UI. We can just select all the data from that table we created and you can see those five values which match with the CSV file that uh, you had written the data from. And you can also and as noted, you can see there, we, we kind of removed like the, the long form table uh, unique identifier just to only use my table, but uh, you can also insert data into the table. So if I want to just open up that shell and, and insert something line by line, I can definitely do that. The only thing that isn't possible in this studio CLI, CLI shell is creating tables. So that's more reserved for what we call our like traditional CLI that's at the at table and slash CLI, just a little bit different functionality. But basically, yeah, this gives you full ability to read and write data to your deployed tables. And as you can see there, the, the value was successfully added. Cool. So now let's go back to our homepage and recall that in this setup we were just doing everything in a personal project it defaults to the name of your account so you can see at the top it just said dtb under everything so that was my username but maybe you want to create collaborative projects and you want to invite other people to your project so we can go ahead and create a new team and we'll just call this team collabs and add and if we wanted to we could add additional emails on the initial invite or let's say we create this team and we want to add additional people 
you can configure that accordingly and invite other email addresses. And then in the future, we'll also have greater access controls around just provisioning who can do what with tables. So we'll also create a new project. We'll call it Collabs Projects, add a description, and then click Submit so that we can set up this project. And just as in the other example, it's the, the same set of features, really. You can create new tables or you can even like import an existing table. So the difference here is generally, you know, when you're in the UI, you can create a, a new table that, that deployment, that blueprints, or if you are using something like, let's say the general or more traditional table and slash CLI, you can create and write to tables in this interface too. So just to demonstrate what it looks like for importing tables, we'll make sure that we've installed that CLI and you can see all the available commands. Really, this gives you like the full set of features with Tableland versus the Studio CLI is a little bit slimmed down in terms of like the actual queries and whatnot. So for example, in the Studio CLI, we couldn't create a table, but we're gonna do one here in just the traditional CLI. And we're gonna call this table, maybe a new table, and pass the, you know, the chain parameters, private key, et cetera. And we can see the name of this table is that more of that long form, so new table, with the chain ID 31337 and table ID 14. So that's the information that we need when we import a table. It's not like the shortened form with just that sort of like alias or prefix, but it's the full table form. We'll come in and select the chain ID. So again, I'm doing this all in a, a local environment. I'm going to make sure I define the table ID, it's 14. The chain ID we already set was 31337 and then the name was new table. And then lastly, we'll attach a description for what this table is and import it accordingly. So what you'll notice is in this home screen, when we create a new table in just purely the UI, it, it already, it said it wasn't deployed yet, but this one already has been deployed. So now we can see all that information, all that metadata associated with it. And just in our other example, uh, no data exists in this yet, but at least we have that like fully deployed table that was created outside of the studio. So for smart contracts too, this would this would work. If you're using just the SDK, this would work. And let's also just create a, another blueprint. Let's call it other table, simple setup around ID, val, you know, same as the other ones that we've used. And in this example, instead of deploying the table within the studio, we can instead use the studio CLI if we want. So this goes back to like the, the studio specific CLI you can see nothing's been deployed yet. So this is just like a different way to approach things. If you're a UI focused person, you can do pretty much you know, all the same sort of things in the UI versus CLI. It just gives you preference in terms of how you want to approach things. So just to recheck, we can run the studio team LS command. You can see the ID, the, the project ID. Uh, for the team and the, the project there. So they're different than what we were using before. So now let's make sure we're using the right context for this new project. So we're gonna say studio use project. So now we have a, a new project that it's pointing to. And then just to get a refresher, let's run the help command. And we want to use the deployment command because we're gonna deploy a table that's been staged in the UI. So recall that other table hasn't been deployed yet. It's just a blueprint right now. And just, you know, for context, we could have also done that with the import table command with the, the CLI um, versus like going into the UI and setting everything up. So just, again, trying to get flexibility there. But if we look at the studio deployment command, you can see that we need to, well, we have access to LS or, or create. So you can list existing deployments if you would like. And this gives you just one table because technically only new table has been deployed. Other table is, is like in, in that staging area. You can see it's not deployed. So now we actually want to go ahead and deploy this table. So we'll type in studio deployment create, and what it, like the, the main field that it requires is that, that name field. So that'll be just like the, uh, the, the pretty form like alias of that of that table. So ours was called, although it was like, you know, other table, 
through and through 37, whatever, with the table ID, we'll just need that other table identifier when we run the create command. So studio deployment creates other table. And then uh, when we run this, we'll also uh, want to pass in the, the chain and provider and, and private key since we're interacting with the, the base chain. So yes, we're okay with uh, creating this table. Let's go ahead and do it. And boom, now we can see that table has been deployed. So if we refresh, okay, cool. It's been deployed. So it took that stage table, that blueprint, and materialized it. So now it's a, it's a real table and we can write data to it and, and interact with it within our applications. Let's just to show some additional functionality, let's just create one final table. This is the standard to, uh, table and CLI, not the studio CLI. We'll call this one test table. And just in our, as in our other examples, you can see that's the, the long form table name. So test table through and three, three, seven, 16. And instead of going through the UI to import the table, let's show you how you can do it within the studio CLI. You can see the parameters needed are a table, a project ID, and a description. So we'll say studio, oh yeah, so the, the identifier that we need, again, is like that project ID. So we'll use a studio team LS just to grab that project ID. And then we'll run the import table command. So studio import table, and then we want the table name recall that was just you know test table um and recall that this is this is like the the full unique identifier we need not just test table but that full string project id and then we'll attach a description with it and once we do this and we'll just wait for it to basically capture that data and then if we go back to the ui and we refresh the page boom you can see test table is now there so these were a few different ways you could interact with importing data, importing tables, handling it in the UI versus handling it in the CLI. And taking a look at the commands that we've used, we pretty much touched on everything. The one that we haven't touched on was unused. So maybe you set up a context and no longer want it, or maybe you want to just log out and remove that session key entirely. So we can just double check when you log out, it states that you've been logged out and we can check the, the session value if we just print out that the studio CLI session dot JSON file and you can see it's empty. So when you're logged in, it would actually have something, but uh, it's been removed since we logged out. The last thing that you should note is there's a share button on uh, you know, various parts of the UI so you can share this actual project and this could be useful if you're collaborating, you wanna, especially in the collabs project, just wanna send it to someone so they can view everything because by default, all projects are open. That wraps up the Studio Web App and CLI overview. Hopefully that provided some context for how to get started with creating teams, projects, and tables. And using those is possible within other, other clients. So we'll release additional tutorials and workshops for exactly that.